Strawberry boogie, strawberry boogie, strawberry boogie, I'll meet you in the middle of the pack. Well, look at there, here's some strawberries. We ought to just go pick some. I got my basket, come on, let's go. Strawberry boogie, strawberry boogie, strawberry boogie, I'll meet you in the middle of the pack. Well, I got this basket about filled up. You might be wondering where I got this basket. Well, there's a story about that. Come on, I'll tell you. First time I saw one of these baskets, an old mountain man, Paul Googe, a wise and generous fellow, lived up in the South Toe Valley in the Yancey County. And he had these baskets hanging on his porch. And I said, Paul, these things are beautiful. What's the story on them? He says, well, they're made out of tulip poplar bark. We lace them up with hickory bark. Then he showed me how to make one. And come on, I'll show you how to make one. So the first thing is you need to look for a small tree, a young, fast-grown tree. This one here is probably six or eight years old, and it's shading my grapevines over there. So if I want to have grapes, I've got to have a little more sunlight to them. So this is a good candidate from which I can make a, a whole run of baskets. And so the first thing you can do is cut around the tree trunk. I don't have to go all the way through the tree, I just have to just make sure I'm all the way through the bark because the inside of the bark is real fibrous. Then I'm going to go up here and figure about twice the height of the basket and make this cut. Now all we have to do is cut down it. So it's just a matter of lifting this bark right off. Right now, when the saps are running, is what the old timers will say, and what's really happening is there's all this new cambium tissue forming under the bark. And because of that, there's all these soft cells. So you can just grab that bark, peel it right off the tree. And there it is. I found a poplar branch, it just fell down. And look, it still has the blossoms on it. And the reason they call them tulip poplars is because the flower looks sort of like a tulip. But you know it's actually a member of the magnolia family. And you know tulip poplars have more nectar per flower than probably any North American plant. Sometimes the trees will have be covered with thousands of these blooms. And the bees can really make a good crop of honey if we beekeepers can get our bees built up quick enough. And you see they've already got lots of nectar. They'll spend their evenings fanning this and evaporating it, getting it down to the proper consistency before they seal it off. Here's some that they have that's already sealed. And even there's a few little cells with pollen in it. You see that light colored pollen? That's probably the tulip poplar pollen. Because they also gather the pollen from the flower, not only the nectar. Over the two or three weeks that the tulip poplars are in bloom, sometimes they'll make more than 100 pounds of honey per hive. So once you get the bark off the tree, the next thing is you gotta score the bottom pattern. And you score sort of like a, like a football shape or like an eye shape. You're not cutting all the way through, you're just cutting through that outer corky layer and leaving the inner fibrous layer intact. Then, you take it and sort of bend it on those scoring marks. And basically, you got the basic format for a beautiful, natural basket. Tulip poplar trees like this can grow to be 200 feet tall. They're the largest North American hardwood. Many years ago, Daniel Boone took a large tulip poplar tree, he carved it into a dugout canoe, he loaded his family and five tons of possessions and sailed down the Ohio River all the way into the Spanish territory. So tulip poplar wood is light, soft, and easy to carve, and it's a great thing for carving bowls and plates, even utensils. Tulip poplar bark can be used as a siding for houses. And we even put some on the gable end of our house. 
Look, here's a Tulip Poplar Bark door. One of our, uh, seemed like a perfect kind of material to cover this old door on our shop. Go. Now you've got a basket, you can carry those berries home. You can make these baskets into small berry baskets or into larger backpacks or hampers. And if they're laced up and have a good strong inner rim on them, they can last for years. Sometimes I go to schools and I talk, tell them stories and show them demonstrations of traditional arts and crafts and telling them that these baskets are made all over the world. And so in some ways, all of our ancestors probably made these kind of baskets if we went far enough back. And one kid raises up his hand and says, Mr. Elliot, Mr. Elliot, I see baskets like that all the time. I say, where do you see baskets like that? He says, McDonald's. I said, McDonald's? He said, yeah, man, the large French fries. Now, I don't go to McDonald's much, but I went to McDonald's after school that day. And I bought me a pack of those French fries and look at that. I realized that the most efficient way to make a vessel out of a piece of flat material is this ancient and yet modern design. And you know, I looked on the bottom of the box and you know what it says? The design of this box is a registered trademark of McDonald's Corporation. Don't you think they're a couple hundred thousand years too late on that? I'm gonna tap it. And then I'm gonna carve a little knot. And I'm gonna cut around through the wood. Oh, I think it's gonna work. Well, I hope you've come to appreciate the tulip poplar tree. You know, I got the bark to slip to make this whistle, and uh, I guess I'll be slipping away. <laughs>